Here's the four stern silverback. I've been using them for some light carving and heavy carving just to get a feel for how the blades perform, how they cut, and some issues with the handle ergonomics. Now, if you hold both of them with similar positions, so you hold the Forester up here, you hold the Silverback up here like this, and you start doing wood cutting, you notice that the Forester has about a 2 to 1 advantage in terms of ability to rough off wood, either at light force or heavy force, it doesn't matter. And that's because the edge is thinner, significantly, and it's slightly more acute, so it goes into the wood easier. The convex grind also makes it easier to do rolling cuts if you want to, and that's where you cut into the wood and sort of rotate the blade to make a sort of circular cut. Out of the way. However, for me, this really isn't a functional grip. Uh, it gets cold here a lot, I don't like to wear gloves, so working up around the steel itself is not really functional. Plus, this is not really chamfered, the edges are just broken, and the spine is relatively squarish here. This is easy to fix, some people like sharp spines for scraping off ferro rods and that type of deal. Uh, but I mean, if you wanted to round this up, and you wanted to really chamfer this out, um, not a huge amount of work to do it, but still you're holding up on the steel, it's relatively thin and when you put a lot of pressure into it uh, you can feel it as a high contact point. The interesting thing was when I cut with the Forester like this and you can see that the edge is really far in front of the hand and I compared it to cutting with the Silverback like this where the edge is right almost just where the hands where you're starting to push the Silverback and the Forester cut about the same so the leverage advantage of the Silverback cancels out the cutting ability uh, advantage of the thinner edge on the Forester, which is kind of interesting. Um, and it's really easy to calculate your leverage advantages, and again that's in the description. Um, the more interesting thing though, and I hadn't really seen this before um, on a knife, is that the handle of the Silverback is relatively sensitive to where you position your hand where I got my hand right now is the optimal position because I'm pushing almost straight in line with the spine just a little bit uh, to the right and that's where my index finger is also uh, locked on so there's a straight line going from where I'm pushing right here on my thumb to my index finger and it goes right through the actual blade itself if I shift just a little bit like this or like that which is relatively difficult to see on camera I can reduce the performance by about 25%. And I couldn't understand what was going on for a wall because I do some carving, do some other stuff, come back, do some more carving, and the results weren't as consistent as what I would expect. I go back and pick up the Forester and they'd fall right in line. And what I found was because the handle on the Silverback is relatively thick and relatively wide, and my hand is relatively more open uh, when I'm using it it's much more sensitive to that straight line of force between where my thumb is pushing and my index finger is holding back onto it. So if I shift a little bit like that, now I'm actually pushing over on this side of the blade with my thumb and I'm sort of right in line with the blade so my line is going sideways and when I try to push into the wood, especially when I'm using a lot of force, it's not very efficient and I'm losing a lot of force trying to control the blade and it's quite interesting. Uh, once you realize this is going on, it becomes instinctive where to position your hand. But it was the first time that I've seen a handle sort of like this which had sort of that effect and it's quite interesting. And I'm going to be looking at it in more detail from now on uh, with other knives. The other thing uh, that I was interested in is uh, see the lines on this blade, the lines on the Forester, they're the points of similar thickness. Now the Silverback has a higher primary grind, well it's because the blade is wider obviously, um, and it thins out faster than the Forester. So even though the Forester has a thinner edge, if you go up, you can see how much higher you have to get on the Silverback to get the same thickness that's there on the Forester. Now what I thought might happen was on lighter cuts, 
the Forester would of course dominate because of the thinner edge. Again, if you hold it like this, um, if you hold it back like this, the leverage disadvantage cancels that out and they're about uh, equal. But I figured I'd see a relative performance difference uh, when I started to do really heavy cutting because as the knife moved further into the wood, I figured the thinner grind on the silverback may show itself. But what I found was that normally doesn't happen unless you have very particular woods because on most woods, uh, when you cut into them uh, relatively hard, like that, you can see that the wood actually breaks apart and this pushes it away from the blade anyway and the only part of the wood that sort of binds on the blade is this very small part that's down here so the fact that the forests are slightly thicker up in this region makes no sort of effect and the relative performance is the same from light cutting to heavy cutting uh, relatively so in short uh, doing carving looking at how much wood you can remove off, looking at the fatigue rates uh, and comfort. If I hold up around here on the Forester and up around here on the Silverback the same position, the Forester is about two to one. If I hold back here to get away from holding on to most of the metal on the Forester and hold up around here, uh, the, they're about the same. Uh, in terms of fatigue, general efforts of comfort and ergonomics, they're very, very similar. Which is interesting because the handles are completely different. The Forester has a much more narrow uh, handle and the Silverback is much thicker. The only thing with the Silverback that's a bit of a negative wind carving, and uh, you see this big hump right here? This is basically suited for a grip like this in the middle of your hand, locks your hand in, your hand is naturally cupped in like that anyway to fit around that. But when you're carving, that hump ends up right where your sort of pinky finger is. So it sort of spreads your hand out a bit. You can sort of feel it and it's a bit awkward, but the effect is really small. Like I did an extended session where I did a thousand cuts with this in the wood just to see what the fatigue rates were like. Relatively very similar with the Forester. Both of them have decent grips in that respect. There's a few issues with both knives. Both of them have recessed screws, which I don't like. Both of them are relatively squarish in the front guard. Uh, they're not fully chamfered, so there's a few problems like that. But overall, I mean, if you're on a scale of sort of one to five, where five is, you know, absolutely perfect, both of these knives, in terms of grip ergonomics and stuff like that, are around a four, where you're having to nitpick sort of things to pick them out. Uh, normally you pick them up and you instinctively know yeah, they feel good, they're comfortable, they allow you to transmit force into the cuts uh, really well, which again is interesting because they're two very uh, different uh, handles. The only last thing that I will say is that in general, very general, and this is a personal thing, I like texturing to be a lot more aggressive than the air on both these knives. Again, that's because I do not wear gloves. I work outside a lot in the rain and in such conditions and I need a very secure uh, grip uh, on the handle. And both of these knives could benefit from a more aggressive surface texture. And that's why whenever I order a custom knife, I never has the handle be finished. I just say basically shape the handle, leave it with whatever uh, shaping grit you use, and that's relatively uh, enough. So that's it. That's some commentary on just the light uh, wood carving. Really nice performance from uh, both knives.